So this lesson is going to cover the properties of a rational function. And essentially, a rational function or a rational expression is just a fraction. So we're going to start off with a definition of a rational expression. And a rational expression is an expression that can be written in the form p over q, where p and q are polynomials. And here's the most important thing. This bottom polynomial q cannot be equal to 0. And that's because division by 0 is impossible. So that's the main thing we're going to look for. We want to make sure that that bottom polynomial does not equal 0. And the next part says a rational expression is it's what we call undefined. It's undefined if the denominator is zero. So if we have a zero denominator, we can't graph it or we can't do anything with it. So the first thing that we do with most rational functions or most of these things, we're going to look at their denominators only. And we're going to determine where the, where the rational expression is undefined. We want to know where in particular is this rational expression going to be undefined because we want to throw those values out. So what we generally do is we're going to focus on factoring. And so in this particular process, we're going to factor just the denominator here first. So the denominator of x squared minus 3x minus 10 factors. And remember, to factor this, we look at the back number, find the factors of 10, which are 5 and 2, or 1 and 10, which set gives you this negative 3? Well, it'll be x minus 5 and x plus 2. We want to know what values make this equal to 0. So what we're going to do is we're going to force them to be 0. And what we want to do is we want to take away those values. So we'll say that it does not equal whatever these values are. So when we do that, and we solve this, it's just going to be the opposite. So what you're really going to do is you're going to get x minus 5 does not equal 0, or x plus 2 does not equal 0. So when you solve, you get the opposite solution. So that means that x is not equal positive 5 or negative 2. So those two values, we're going to take them out the domain. If you look here, remember, your first thing to try to do is always try to factor it. And we're only really focusing on the denominator because the, denomin the denominator cannot be 0. So when we factor x squared plus 4, well, this does not factor generally the way we think of it does. But we're going to say x squared plus 4 does not equal 0. And so to solve this, we'll move x squared, we'll move, set x squared over here, and we'll say that this does not equal negative 4. Because so we'll move the 4 over. We'll bring the 4 over to this side. Well, when we take the square root of both sides now, remember you're taking the square root of a negative number. That means that your x does not equal plus or minus 2i when you have negatives. So this is just the imaginary form of it. Now, that's what we call defining the denominator, or saying what values make the denominator undefined. The next step in a rational expression is going to be the um, getting, a, getting it to simplest terms. And that's just like a fraction. For instance, if you have 15 twentieths, well, to get to the simplest form, what would you do? You would see what do both terms have in common. 15 and 20 both have a 5. You divide them both by 5. So 15 divided by 5 is 3. 20 divided by 5 is 4. So this reduces to 3 fourths. So the process of writing a rational expression in lowest terms or simplest terms is called simplifying a rational expression. So we're going to simplify a rational expression. The first thing you do in a, to simplify a rational expression is you're going to factor the top and bottom of the fraction. So here, for instance, if you look here, x squared minus 9. Well, we can factor that into x minus 3, x plus 3. And then if we factor the bottom, the bottom factors into x squared plus x minus 6 factors into x plus 3, x minus 2. 
So once you factor, the next thing is you're going to try to or you're going to cancel any terms that are common to both the denominator and the numerator. So in this particular case, notice that you have an x plus 3 and an x plus 3 common to both. So in simplest terms, the, solution, the answer here is x minus 3 over x minus 2. If you look here, 6 minus x already factored. So the top here is just 6 minus x. The bottom factors into x minus 6, x plus 6. This right here is something special because notice that 6 minus x is the exact opposite of x minus 6. And what do I mean by that? Here the 6 is positive, here the 6 is negative. <coughs> here the x is negative, here the x is positive. So they're the exact opposite. Well, we can fix that by multiplying this by a negative 1, and it makes them the exact same terms. Because multiplying by the negative 1 now makes this x minus 6 over x minus 6 times x plus 6. So what you have now is you have a negative 1 that you've multiplied by here. So essentially, these are going to cancel now, and you're left with just a negative 1 over x plus 6. Or you can write this also written as 1 over, the negative goes to the bottom now, and so it'll change all the signs on the bottom, so you would just get 1 over, you would get 1 over 6 minus x. <coughs> and all I did was I changed the signs, and I made this, it should actually be, negative x over six, negative six minus x. You just change both your signs and you have the negative down there. So that's the same way. We generally write it like this though. That is the more correct way to write it. The more correct way you'll see it. The top one now, again, we're going to factor. So this top part is actually factored through cubes. This is a cube right here. And to factor it, we're going to factor this using the difference of cubes. And I want you to realize that you have a cube here. 8 is a cube, x cubed is a cube, and 27 is a cube. As a matter of fact, I'll write up their cube roots. So 8's cube is 2. x cubed's root, uh, cube root is x, and 27's cubed is 3. So when we factor, difference of cubes factors as a minus b times a squared minus a, B, or plus A, B, plus B squared. So your A here is 2, your B is 3, and so let's watch how this works together. So when we factor this top part, it'll just be 2X minus 3, A minus B. A squared will be 2X squared, so it'll just be 4X squared, plus AB is 2X times 3, so that'll be 6X. And then B squared is 3 squared, which is 9. All of this divided by, the bottom is, notice this, that this is perfect squares. And this is a square, 4 is, a, and I know that because 4 is a square, 9 is a square. I can see that already. And uh, the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of 9 is 3, and 2 times 3 is going to be 6. So that's going to give me the middle term. So this bottom factors as uh, 2x plus 3 times 2x plus 3. Now notice that these are different terms right here. These are different terms. You can't make them the same by doing the negative 1 trick we tried here. So in theory, this already is set to its lowest terms. There is nothing else that can be done to this problem here.